And we've had to reactivate our isolation center. Our average daily rates of infection now stand at 700 compared to 200 two weeks ago. If there's no urgent reason for you to be outside, please stay at home. The news at 6 is live on Joy 99.7 FM and hits 103.9 in Accra. It's also on Love 99.5 in Kumasi. Affiliates across Ghana, including Might FM, Tamale, Bedram FM Northeast and Savannah regions and worldwide at myjoyonline.com. Coming up, scores of passengers stranded as pontoon ferrying them breaks down in the middle of a journey on the Volta Lake. There is a rain, this thing is coming. So the pantoon go and walk at the one at the village. All the passengers, the loaded cars at the pantoon right now. Also, minority in parliament to summon the IGP on plans to curb increasing armed robbery attacks in the country as it warns citizens may resort to self help if police fails to deal with the situation. They would resort to self help because it appears they can no longer be uh, rely on the for protection. Is that bad? And in business. Kelney GVG platform saves potential loss of 1.5 billion cities to the state. We'll tell you how. That's later on the Joy Business Report. And also in this package, Supreme Court to rule on whether or not John Dramani Mahama should be allowed to reopen his case later today. We'll tell you what to expect. Thanks for your company. Let's settle now for the details. And to our first story, rescuers have been working through the night to get scores of passengers who were stranded after a pontoon ferrying them across the water lake at Eche Amanfrom in the Kweua from Plains South District broke down last night. Officials have not given exact numbers, but as many as 60 people are thought to have been stuck. We take you live uh, to our correspondent in the region for an update. But first, here is the spokesperson of the National Cargo Drivers Association, Dixon, a J. Donko, speaking to Kofisi about the incident. Unfortunately, today there is a rain, this thing is coming. So the pantoon go and walk at the one at the village. All the passengers, the loaded cars at the pantoon right now. Since from 4.30 p.m., oh, we took some other motors, engine boat. As soon as I heard that information, that hey, my people will be suffering. Our market woman also is in the pantoon. They will be so we took about three or four other motors and then we send it to them. And then we take them to adults to go to home. Then tomorrow morning, we'll see what you have. You heard there the spokesperson of the National Cargo Drivers Association, Dixon J. Donko. There, we're unable to speak to Kofisian at this moment, but update coming through is that the last batch of stranded passengers were rescued moments ago. Now, the minority in parliament has served notice it was summoned the Inspector General of Police, James Opong Bueno, before the House to address the nation on how he intends to deal with the recent wave of armed robbery attacks in the country. This demand comes on the back of a series of armed robbery attacks recorded in the last few days, including the attack on the Asokore Mampong MCE Ali Duseidu, who was robbed at gunpoint. We we'll hear from the former minority spokesperson on defense and interior, James Agalga, shortly. But first, here's a news desk report on the recent attacks which have raised concerns. We just go to Burkina Faso to cut down to, my, to, to our, our local market centers within the country and see how we have been robbing. And robbers for yeah, Burkina Faso, Tamale Faso, yes, Rabba. The cry of tomato traders and transporters who since last month have been persistently attacked by armed highway robbers. Most of them ply the Kumasi Bolgatanga Burkina Faso highway, and while some escape the attacks, others have not been so lucky. In the eastern region, armed robbers shot and killed an EMT officer driving an ambulance conveying a pregnant woman and a paramedic. There were about nine young boys who were held at gunpoint from about 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. They took everything. It took police there more than a week to take witness statements from the survivors. Police have reportedly apprehended two persons in connection with the incident, although details are scanty. Only this weekend, armed robbers attacked the MCE for Asokore Mampong in the Ashanti region, Alaji Ali Duseidu, taking away his official vehicle, a Toyota Highlander, and his mobile phones. And that was a news desk report. A former minority spokesperson on defense and interior, James Agalga, says citizens may resort to self-protection if the police fails to quickly deal with the robbery attacks. 
And that inspires this particular government uh, touted this achievement, uh, like such as um, claiming that they, they, they tool the police service with so many vehicles. Now, Parker, we need to be asking ourselves if indeed the police service has been retooled the way this government uh, wants us to believe. What is making it difficult for uh, uh, the police to engage the armed robbers and flash them out of our country? We need to interrogate the issues well. And like I said, I believe strongly that the time has come for uh, the government to address us on the um, recent um, speech in armed robbery. The in you have the former minority spokesperson on defense and interior, James Agarga. Now, the Supreme Court is this morning expected to deliver its ruling on whether or not John Dramani Mahama should be allowed to reopen his case. Mr. Mahama's lawyers on Monday argued they want to cross-examine EC Chairperson Jin Mensah, but this was resisted. We could not have subpoenaed Mrs. Jean Mensah because she had a witness statement that she had filed in this court on behalf of the first defender, uh, the first respondent. It's my submission that the various ruling by the court for interlocutories, review, discovery, they have all addressed the matters that she is raising. It will be nothing but madness for a party to assume to rely on his opponents to prove his case. My lords, bless our case. And you heard excerpts of the arguments in court yesterday. We'll bring you the latest on the ruling, which has the potential to take the court a step closer towards resolving the election dispute or extending its hearings. Now, Minister-designate for Local Government and Rural Development, Dan Butchery, is describing as baseless accusations that he worked to disenfranchise the people of Sal and force them into the OT region from voter region against their will. Answering questions from members of Parliament's Appointments Committee, Mr. Dan Butchery noted that the procedure to create new regions is clearly outlined in the Constitution, and that is what his previous ministry followed in creating the new regions. My colleague, Kweku Asante, a small in the following report. The vetting of local government minister-designate Dan Botry was one of the shortest due to the privilege accorded to senior members of parliament who appear before the appointment committee. To pay assembly members or not to pay, the conversation is finding its way back into national discussion after the 2020 election. Minister-designate for local government Dan Botry does not believe assembly members should be paid salaries. Assembly members to the best of my knowledge, do not work full time at the assembly. And many people who also get elected as assemblymen, some of them to also um, work are paid by uh, government. On SAR, Mr. Danboche is describing as baseless accusations that he worked to disenfranchise the people in those areas. I have to state that this allegation is coming out of a deep misunderstanding it has no basis at all. I call Kweku Asante with that report there. And in more reactions to yesterday's vetting sessions, the executive director of the Media Foundation for West Africa insists closure of some radio stations by the NTA was politically motivated. Now, the minister designate for communications and digitization, Esla Ousue Kufu, at a vetting yesterday, refuted suggestions the action was to remove stations that were deemed unfriendly or affiliated to the opposition NDC. Uh, Mr. Brimer noted the evidence suggests the NCA was selective in application of the law. The, the action was politically motivated, judging from the evidence that was available. Nobody is begrudging to any institution if it seeks to enforce our laws. The question is, in enforcing the law, if A does this and you would punish him, if B does the same thing, the expectation is that you would exact the same punishment to B. So the issue is being discriminatory in the process. And, and the evidence of which is what is being pointed out. Executive Director of Media Foundation for West Africa, Suleiman Obrima there. And then finally, before we go to Arrive Alive, brought to you by the National Road Safety Authority with support from Toyota Ghana, Logistics Movers, and the Joy News Drive Safe campaign. Try to recognize potentially dangerous drivers on the pedestrians alongside the road and keep well clear of them. And that's how you arrive alive. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. I am Anor Kranting. The Super Morning Show continues.
Charlie, check this. 